There are a few quotes from Stoic thinkers which come to mind when watching that final scene of the great 1948 Italian film Bicycle Thieves, directed by Vittorio De Sica. The first one is, What upsets people is not things themselves, but their judgments about those things. This is a simple, beautiful story of a poorer man who takes a job he needs, sells his family's bedsheets to pay for a new bicycle needed to do said job, sees his bicycle stolen, fails to track down the thief, and then, in frustration, tries to steal someone else's bike at the end, only to get caught. He becomes the very thing that caused him misery and grief throughout the entire movie. Perhaps it wasn't until the end, when the angry mob who caught him yet decided to let him walk away, that he realizes that the person who stole his bike at the beginning of the movie probably also stole out of desperation. Now it's easy for us as observers to advise, let the bike go when your family's survival potentially depends on it. But did it depend on it, is the question. He accepted the position, which required a bicycle, knowing he didn't have one. How do we know there wouldn't be another job to come along that was more suited for his situation? He took that job. He then had to take his family's bedsheets to pay for a bike which someone else ended up taking from him. And that's where the quote comes in. Maybe it's not the bicycle, a.k.a. the thing, that upset him, but his judgment to accept a job which required something he didn't have and then his judgment to allow his bike getting stolen to transform him in some way into becoming someone who makes the decision also to try to steal someone else's bike. Clearly he's upset in the final scene after the mob let him go, and he walks home with his son who is also upset, and his son has seen everything in the movie firsthand. Is he upset, the father, at what he's become, what he did? Is he still upset at his situation, his unfortunate luck as he perceives it? Maybe it's a combination of those things. All the struggling, all the grief at having a life he maybe wishes were better, that he was a better father, a better partner, a better person. We could probably make the case, and maybe someone will, that apart from a few lapses in good judgment, he is a good person all around, one who dedicated himself to himself and his family. What I think might also upset him, if you watch the final scene, is that as he and his son walk home, slowly disappearing into a crowd of people, fading into the masses, is a profound realization that he is simply not special. That he's a part of a huge blob of a living organism known as humanity there only to live for a while and to be dead for much longer. It's a form of sad acceptance into being less important than he wants to be, to be part of a collective which essentially isn't that concerned with what happens to him, his family, or his bicycle situation. Life will go forward, for better or worse, no matter what happens to him. But the individualist in me wonders, why accept that, at least in terms of how you live your life until you die? Why slowly walk with the masses, with your head down? Isn't there some other way to get whatever it is we're looking for? It's his path. He may have very little time, just like the rest of us, but what we decide to do with it is up to us, isn't it? Another quote that comes to mind, You become what you give your attention to. If you yourself don't choose what thoughts and images you expose yourself to, someone else will. Does he have to conform to the path everyone else is on? Or can he go a different direction? I'll leave you with one final quote. The average man is a conformist, accepting miseries and disasters, with the stoicism of a cow standing in the rain. <laughs>